The first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, chairman of the General Sports Authority and president of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, attended Bahrain's World Cup qualifier against Indonesia, which ended in a 2-2 draw at Bahrain National Stadium. His Highness Sheikh Khalid praised the national team's efforts and the strong support from Bahraini fans encouraging the players to continue to pushing for more points as they progress through the qualifiers. His Honor Sheikh Khaled highlighted the importance of improving performance in the upcoming matches, aiming for World Cup qualification. His Honor Sheikh Khaled urged the team to stay focused, work hard in training, build confidence, affirming that the players have the talent and the determination needed to achieve better results. The Chairman of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, inaugurated the Central Medical and Pharmaceutical Supply Project, Shifa National Medical Supply. The Minister of Health, Dr. Jalila bin Tasayyid Jawad Hassan, also attended the event. Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed stated that the significant project comes in implementation of the Cabinet's decision to transfer the management of central medical warehouses to the SCH with a comprehensive development strategy aimed at improving the quality of medical services and meeting the growing needs of the community. Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah also highlighted several measures taken to enhance Bahrain's medicinal supplies, including the formation of the National Committee for Unified Procurement of Medicines and Medical Supplies, allowing the private sector to submit procurement requests through the committee, and establishing the central warehouses under the health insurance fund. The chairman explained that the central warehouses will implement a system to track purchases, register inventory data, and manage stock distribution in pharmacies across government hospitals, ensuring oversight of operations in the central warehouse pharmacies and the related departments. The Kingdom of Bahrain is keen to continue its efforts to enhance drug security through the advanced health and quality initiatives that contribute to ensuring the availability of medicines and health supplies for patients, as well as ensuring that these medicines and health supplies comply with the international standard specifications. The Kingdom also established an advanced infrastructure for storing, transporting, and distributing medicines, ensuring their quality is maintained. The Kingdom of Bahrain also seeks to intensify international cooperation through cooperation with international and regional organizations to exchange expertise and knowledge in the field of drug security. The Minister of Social Development Chairman of the National Committee for the Elderly, Osama bin Ahmed Khalaf Al Asfour, attended the Arab Day of Older Persons event. The Assistant Under Secretary for Welfare and Social Rehabilitation, Zainab Salman Al Awinati, participated in the event. The Minister highlighted Bahrain's approach to elderly care, focusing on enhancing their abilities and promoting their social roles. He commended the positive examples of those excelling in community service and has emphasized the efforts to make full use of their expertise and ideas. He also affirmed that the ministry in collaboration with relevant ministries, institutions, civil society and the private sector will continue working through the National Committee for the Elderly to provide the best services. He expressed appreciation for the initiatives aimed at supporting and caring for this important group, recognizing their contributions to society. The Ambassador of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the United States of America, Sheikh Abdullah bin Rashid Al Khalifa, participated in a panel discussion on regional security and securing peace and stability in the region at Harvard University in the United States. In his speech, the Ambassador referred to the firm position of the Kingdom of Bahrain, led by His Majesty the King, to establish security and comprehensive peace at the regional and international levels and to support regional and international diplomatic efforts to reach comprehensive, just and sustainable solutions to conflicts and wars. He also pointed out the importance of the speech of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister during the general discussion of the United Nations General Assembly in its 79th session in which His Royal Highness affirmed the Kingdom of Bahrain's commitment to uploading, upholding diplomacy and dialogue in settling disputes and spreading the principles of peace and coexistence. He also emphasized the depth of the historical friendship and strategic partnership between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United States in various political, security, defense, legal, 
economic and technical fields and their joint keenness to consolidate regional and global security and peace within the framework of the Comprehensive Security Integration and Prosperity Agreement. The Under Secretary of the Ministry of Health, Dr. Lulwa Rashid Shwaitar, participated in the 10th GCC Health Ministers Committee meeting and the 87th General Conference of the GCC Health Ministers Council. The meetings reviewed the 2024 performance report of the GCC Health Council and discussed several agenda items and projects. The Secretary General of the Gulf Cooperation Council, Jasim Mohammed Al Bdewi, participated in the 10th meeting of the Ministers of the Health of the GCC member states held in Qatar. Al Bdewi affirmed that the leaders of the member states firmly believe that the health sector is essential for achieving health community development. Al Bdewi pointed out during his speech that the directives of the leaders of the member states always focused on the diligent and continuous efforts to advance the GCC mission and benefit from the achievements made for the service of the member states and their people. The meeting also covered the continuation of close coordination among the countries in health matters and the participants reviewed the outputs, outputs of the technical committees working in the health sector along with the proposals for the member states for developing and enhancing health services. The Kingdom of Bahrain participates with the international community in raising awareness about breast cancer in every October every year with the aim of increasing awareness of the disease and its repercussions and supporting research that seeks to find an effective treatment for the disease. October or as it is known as the Pink Month all of whose days are dedicated every year to highlighting the causes of the disease and the ways to prevent it and the importance of early detection to immunize and protect women against this disease. According to the World Health Organization, breast cancer is the most common cancer among women around the world, but the death rate from this disease is constantly declining due to increased awareness and early screening for this disease. And before we end the news, let's take a look at the latest cultural news in the following report. The Islamic World Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, the ISESCO, called on all to intensify efforts to promote literacy, improve its quality and maximize its use in promoting mutual understanding and peace. On the occasion of the International Literacy Day, the organization stressed on proactive preventive means to close the sources of illiteracy and adopt therapeutic mechanisms to address this phenomenon, and this year comes under the slogan Promoting Multilingual Education, Literacy for Mutual Understanding and Peace. The organization explained in a statement that based on its belief in the importance of supporting literacy and inclusive and equitable education for all, it focuses within its mission and strategic vision on education as a human right by spreading awareness on the need to confront illiteracy and focusing on marginalized groups, especially girls and women. It also highlights the need to mobilize adequate financial resources and increase the investments allocated to this field, as well as the availability of more open, free, and high-quality educational resources. It pointed out that supporting literacy programs in its member states is at the core of its priorities, as the progress made in this field is not enough, noting that the road is still difficult and needs a lot of effort and international cooperation in a global context characterized by the presence of 765 million illiterate youth and adults, two-thirds of whom are girls and women, in addition to widespread inequalities in access to literacy programs and the weak participation of the poor, needy, and disadvantaged groups. The organization pointed out that the fast-paced world, where technology is increasingly important and cultures are multicultural, the rehabilitation of individuals through a multilingual educational approach based on the mother tongue is more urgent than ever, as this approach contributes pivotally to enhancing reading and writing skills, encouraging mutual understanding and respect for cultural diversity, supporting efforts to build more just and peaceful societies, and providing individuals with ample prospects for continuous learning.